And good afternoon, rugby fans. We are here at Marvel Field, Providence, Rhode Island, Brown University. Brown University is taking on the Cornell Big Red. Big Red is going to be kicking off in the red and white stripes. Brown in there, brown and gray. John Broker with Matt Mitchell today for a great, great, great game of rugby. Hi, good to be here. Looking forward to it. Should be a fun one to go as referee Mike McConnell gets us underway. And it is Matt Calarco to kick us off. Doesn't go 10, but Brown plays that one, so they're going to keep moving. Brown on the attack nice and early go the Bears. Little set of forwards there, forward pod, led by Jacob Goldberg, puts it in. Now they're looking a little bit wider, and they're going to go straight to the boot. Tight defense there from the Big Red. Possibly had some room. Ball goes back to Blake Weeks. Weeks doesn't feel it well. We'll have a first scrum of a game here. Great attacking position here for the Brown Bears. Yeah, it was a good start. Good to get out of the half and get into their territory and play the ball in their half. Uh, at the end of the day, it's a territory game, so looking forward to it. First scrum here for the Bears. Coach Laflamme looking on. Interestingly, made a few substitutions this week to his team. James Horkin, the freshman at number 10 from Andover, Mass. Looks to receive this ball out wide. See where this first set of play goes, this first run of play goes for the Bears. Good squeeze on there. A referee McConnell wants to see that ball come out. Not calling a penalty as of yet. He's going to set, set it back up. Nice first scrum there for, Bear, for Brown. Yeah, huge scrum. Unlucky to not get the penalty with a strong push, but I guess they're trying to capitalize that on the second scrum here. Yeah, first five minutes of the game, always good to have a big push in the set piece, especially big morale swing from the forwards. Set the tone of play for the rest of the match. Coach Laflamme and Fluke will be happy with that, I am sure. Just under a couple of minutes gone here. Underway again is the Brown forward pack. Ball is going to go this time into Horkin's hands. He's got a couple of runners, but it comes just a little slow. But a wraparound goes quickly there and into the back. Lucas Tay gets by one, taken down by another. Ball in the center of the field, runners either way. Again, a very tight-looking defense from Cornell, but good pressure. Puts it on advantage here for a knock-on as Paul Muser brings that one in. And a referee McConnell whistling here. Coming back for a penalty against Cornell. Didn't see what it was. JT Dyer puts out on a touch. First line out here. Another great attacking position here. Yeah, deep in their 22, first attacking option. It'll be interesting if they maul it or if they go out to the backs. They should be looking to get points here, though. Goldberg, the freshman hooker from London. Played his rugby at the Harrow School before he came here to put this one in. A couple of options here in a five-man lineout. We'll see where he decides to go. They're going to work this one back into the middle. They are going to go to the front. It's a little deception there, and they go straight to the mall. Good work here by Brown. Big pressure on Cornell, driving them towards the sideline, but that one's going to come away. Now a ball out to Horkin. Horkin looking for a runner was slowed down just a tad, but they're going to be able to set this one up. They've got massive numbers out on the left-hand side if they decide to go this way. Ball just a little slow at down in the hands of JT Dyer. Dyer moves that one out to Cortabaria. Cortabaria from Belen Jesuit gets tackled, but referee McConnell is going to bring us all the way back here for a penalty against Cornell again. Cornell really under the pump right now as Dylan Lewis slows it down. Yeah, interesting that he chose scrum given how strong that ball was just there. Scrum was pretty strong earlier as well. This will give Cortabaria a chance to break if he would like. Amara Dillon, the wing, has moved infield, so there's a bit of open space there for Cortabaria if you would like it. On the right-hand side off the back of the scrum, we'll see what the ultimate decision here is. A little bit of pressure on from Cornell that time, trying to get a jump on him. 
Lewis puts that one in. Ball is back to Brown. Good drive going on. They're going to look to get this to the backs, and Horkin has a hold of it. He goes a little bit wider to Dyer. Dyer goes around it back to Dylan. Dylan out to the wing. They have the room this time. Duncan Grant heads to the corner. Duncan Grant shakes off a tackle, heads toward the middle of the field, and Duncan Grant touches down the first one of the game. The Brookline, Massachusetts senior, touches down for a five-pointer. Yeah, the centers ran good lines, running, cutting in, which forced the defense to choke off and hold in. And then they threw the out-the-back pass and then skipped one to Duncan. Duncan Grant with some good work there. We have a kick to come, see if they can add an extra two points. Lucas Tay lines this one up. Pushes it across the face there. We're going to stay at five here with a Cornell big red kickoff to come. The men from Ithaca making the six-hour journey down here for an Ivy League matchup here at Marvel Field. Again, ball doesn't go 10. Now it does. Brown is going to have to get something going here. That's Paul Muser picking that one up. Belmont High School product. One of the rugby powerhouse schools in Massachusetts, but comes back another penalty of the breakdown against Cornell. Big problem area for them so far. Dyer is going to unload on that one, put it downfield. The Redwood High School grad played with San Francisco Gold Gate out in California. There's high school years. Another attacking line out here for the Bears. Line out coming as they shift towards the front. Muser can't hold on to that one. Ball comes back. Big red way, but taken down by Brown. Referee says no knock-ons. Let's play a game here. Horkin, the freshman, moves it out wide. A little bit loopy there, but up to Chase Beckeris. Yeah, strong run there by Forge. Little show and go there from the Bears. Working their way slowly upfield here, right outside the 40-meter line. Getting their pattern together, Muser. Ball down a little, push around, a nice little pass there off the back. Runner is isolated, however, but able to step, and off we go. Here we are for a second try in as many attempts. Number 11, Duncan Grant touches down. Another try on the left side for the Brown Bears. Yeah, good there from the scrum off Dan Lewis to see that there was an overlap on the blind side and capitalized on that with Santiago Cortabaria taking it in, doing the offload to Duncan, and what a finish from that. It was almost a 40-meter try. Grant touches down a little close to center this time, making it a little bit easier for Tay. Straight in front, should be in his range. And that one is good from Tay. We're at seven, or 12, excuse me, nil. The Brown Bears over the Cornell Big Red here at Marvel Field. Switching around just a bit here at Brown. Cornell ready to get on the run. They would like to shake off this rust so far, get the ball into the hands of themselves. They do not. Dylan moves that one into the middle of the field. A little more room here outside their 22. Powerful run coming from the Bears. Another set of forwards sitting there waiting. We'll step outside there from Goldberg. Ball up into the hands of Dyer. Dyer shows, hangs onto it, makes a little bit of room. Caught up by the Cornell defense. Again, the Cornell defense leaving tons of space, but they're gonna go to the air this time is Brown. 
really first opportunity to attack there for Cornell, but gets scuttled with yet another penalty by the Big Red. Yeah, it's a shame there. They looked like they had a bit of a counter-attack opportunity. It didn't look like the line was coming up very strong from the Brown Bears, so it looked like they had a bit of open space to work with. Dyer pushes another one downfield. Very good boot on the outside center. That's Brown, another opportunity inside the 40 meters. Goldberg, the freshman economics and politics major. Looking for an intended jumper, they go to Muser. Ball off the top there in the hands of Horkin. He's got runners. The try scorer passes it on there to Dyer. Dyer gets it out to Tay. Tay looking for Dylan. Amar Dylan trying to step around the outside. Sneaks through a couple. Lewis back across the field into the hands of Cortabaria, one of two brothers. On freshman on this Brown team. Dyer standing in the first receiver spot. Is he going to go wide? He's going to keep it a bit tight there as Chase Beckeris takes that one in. We're going to come back to another penalty for a high tackle this time against Cornell. And things not going the way of the boys from Ithaca at the moment as Tay steps back inside a couple. Tay into the corner. And Lucas Tay touches down our third try. And the Bears extend their lead to 17. Yeah, James Hawken there taking the quick tap. They look like they want to play quickly and that's their, start, that's their intent here. And a good finish from Lucas Tay to cut back in and to dive under two defenders. Some nice little steps there as time wears on in this first half. Tay to convert his own kick. Just about 13, 14 minutes gone in this first half. Ivy League action here at Marvel Field. Good look at Lucas Tay, Singapore born, went to the Anglo Chinese school, has already played for the Singaporean Sevens team. This one it rides a little low, not going to make it. We're going to stay at 17. Brown is still in a commanding lead here. Cornell really unable to put together any offense at this point. Uh, yeah, Brown's doing very well to keep the ball, and they want to play with that. I think that's how they want to play today, and they're doing it to a good extent. Yeah, Cornell have given out a few penalties, which meant that Brown got... Um, there wasn't much pressure on Brown, which meant they could kick the touch and move forward like that, as opposed to return it with just a regular kick where Cornell will get the ball. Another kick, not going 10. Brown plays it, knocked forward. It could be a first scrum or a play on for the Big Red, but here they come. Blake Weeks looking for some runners. A little pick and go off the back there, trying to get it set. Big number 16, Danny Singh. We're going to come back for the dock on, be a first attacking op opportunity here for the Cornell team. Nice scrum in midfield, a couple of options either way. Yeah, center field, so you can go left, go right, the eight can also pick. So. Referee McConnell brings us together. Blake Weeks, Nashville, Tennessee born. They get it, they're gonna come off the back there to big number eight, Tyler Webb, but referee McConnell is gonna bring us back in here with a penalty against Cornell again. I didn't see what that one was at this round. Oh, I didn't see that as well. Something inside of that dark area. And Dyer. Drives another one downfield, another attacking line out for Brown. It's about 25 meters out from the 
Cornell line, which they are happily visiting over and over again so far in this half. We'll see how this goes. Court to Baria. It's that one. Ball down to Lewis. Losing, Lewis moves it out, looking for some runners coming around. Ball is in the middle there. That is Aaron Kranz with a hold of it. A little miscue, but Brown able to hold on to a Dyer. Shoulders off one, finally taken down by Patrick Glenwright. Ball out to the hands of Jack Forgione. Horkin into the middle of the field here again. This is Oliver Beeling. Lewis gets the ball to Dyer. Dyer in that first receiver position into the hands of Al Hasso, playing a tight head today. But a little miscue there from Brown on an open side, a very open set of room where they could have scored. We're going to have a scrum here for Cornell. Yeah, that sort of offload was a bit pushed there. I guess ideally you would have taken it. It's hard when you see the space and you see it's a two and one and you think in your head that if you give a pass then it's going to be a try, but realistically that should have just been held and carried. Cornell just outside their own 22. Very Big, strong scrum there. Yeah, good push from Brown. Bullet does come back, go to the goes to the air this time. Tay on that side of the field watches it roll into touch. We are going to come back for a line out here for Brown just inside their half. Cornell relieves the pressure that time. Yeah, very good kick just outside the 22, so obviously can't go straight out and turns up with the Brown line out almost halfway. But takes off a lot of pressure off the Cornell, big red. Ball down, it comes down Brown's way. A little bit of a messy line out. Line out throws are just coming a little low at the moment, but a show and go there. And off go the Bears across midfield. Turned over this time by Cornell. Cornell, good work at that breakdown. This is just what they needed. It's a little pick and go. Gets them across midfield. And a kick this time, probably intelligently from Blake Weeks. Tay takes it inside his 22, calls for a mark. Referee has not awarded the mark <laughs> and has eventually. Cornell players really did nothing wrong. That was, that was on the referee not calling that one. Yeah, that was quite bizarre. Yeah, it's bad luck from the 15 Lucas stages yeah, to be standing there <laughs> thinking that all was good and then have two big Cornell boys come and tackle you. Yeah, he was hoping for a little more break. Referee McConnell, not sure what he's going to call here, actually. Looks like the forwards are coming in together for a scrum. Yeah, it looks like a scrum, but he's, he's actually come back. He's going to give him the free kick. Everybody makes mistakes. We'll give that one to the referee. You just didn't quite hear that or see it. So, But right answer comes out here, and we're good to go. Lucas Tay, ball in hand. Just gets that ball over to the corner, and the Bears would like to run, but a little knock-on sneaks in there. Referee McConnell may not have seen it. As off they go through big Joe Alhasso. Got runners in a couple of different places. Horkin gets it to the boot, launches one up, hanging in the air, and the sun. Well taken there by Cornell. Good work by, looks like their scrum half, Blake Weeks. A little pick and go off the side there. Number 13, Zechariah Zidi. In the contact that time, off they go. Number 10, Matt Calarco. Hit fairly well there, the Tennessee natives, as we said before. Looking for a set of forwards. Drive there from 
Cornell finally getting some offense here, playing the tight pick and go game. Yeah, it's good defense so far from the Brown Bears, but important that they don't give away a penalty. Weeks probably not going to be thrilled with that pass, but uh, gets it out there. And not getting any ground, but getting through a few phases is Cornell right now. Referee McConnell spots that one. Let's see where his call is going to go. And it is against Brown this time. And Cornell with an opportunity to move this downfield. And this maybe their first attacking line out of the game. Yeah, I believe so. Just over the halfway mark of this first half here at Marble Field. Cornell looks at the front of the lineup, but swiped away by Muser there. Excellent work by Brown, but under pressure now as the ball rolls back to their 22. Ball out to Dyer, or Horkin, excuse me. Going to get that ball just out inside midfield, and here comes Cornell. Big looping run and a one-handed pass up there, and ZD. Has to put one in, tries to get it back to Boresta. Boresta can't get a hold of it, but the ball goes to a boot there. Horkin back on it into his try zone, touches it down. Believe we should have a goal line dropout here. And the goal line dropout comes, and they're right in the middle of the field at the 22. Bounces into the hands of Cameron Canara. Canara takes that one in. Right at the 22, a little pick and go from the big set of Cornell forwards here. The men from Ithaca never lacking in some size. They go back to the well on that one. See if they get away with it. They do, and pick and go in one more time. Looks like camp. The tight game here from Cornell. Brown drawn in there defensively. Have to try to attack this meter by meter. Slow moving big fella attack here as the ball comes out this time. Into the hands of the big inside center, Villani. Villani taken down. Weeks looks for a little kick off to the side there, but rolls it through the back of the try zone. We're going to come back here. Referee McConnell has spotted a Brown penalty. We'll come back for a penalty against the Bears at their home field. Yeah, Cornell had a little penalty advantage there, so it's good to see that they were playing a bit adventurous, knowing that they, they're going to get the ball back and did that little chip. Unfortunately, he didn't quite execute, but it was a good idea. We'll see what they decide to do. Looks like they're going to just take a tap penalty. And off they go, setting one of the big units. Brown takes him down. Would have to say the pick and go game is going to be on play here for Cornell. I'd like to keep this ball a little bit tight here. The referee spots a knock on in there by Cornell and all that good work for nothing. We're going to come back for a Brown scrum inside their own zone. Yeah, it's a real shame by Cornell. They were getting their big forwards were getting lower than the Brown forwards and making valuable yards and they were sort of ticking their way up the field. But unfortunately they just made a slight mistake and all the hard work is gone. It's important to put a lot of pressure on this scrum, especially if Brown kick here, a lot of pressure on the kicker so that they could rectify some of the yards that they just made. Off the back there goes Cortabaria. He hands off one or two players and is going to take that one in. Brown on the run. They've got runners out wide if they want him. They're going to come back here and go to Dyer, and Dyer is going to try to put in a touch but doesn't find it. And in the hands of John Wooten, wing for Cornell. He gets taken in just outside his own 22. Penalty now against 
Brown for uh, trying to dig their hands in that ruck. They're going to have to bring it back to the mark here. Not the most exciting last few minutes of rugby, but uh, some work on defense here from Brown, keeping Cornell out. Yeah, another tap and go there by Cornell. Looking to go wide, ball, nice shoelace catch there from Cornell, and they've got some room now as they put their big number seven, Glenn Wright, into the backfield. They've got some runners out to the left-hand side here. It looks like they're gonna send some forwards plodding over again. Again, more hard work from Cornell, just keeping that one tight. Go watch, they don't get a player isolated here. Brown a little drawn in there on defense, but Cornell just heads it straight up into the middle. Can't get it to the wing where the open space was. Now we have a penalty against Brown again. Right in front of the post here for Cornell. Down at 17, nothing at this point. They probably need the points. And they're gonna tap and go as they have done. Off to the other side this time. A ball gets scooped up by Brown there. A little miscue. Could not convert that pass in the penalty, and now they're going to find a little bit of room. Is Brown actually caught up by the Cornell defense? They will remain inside their 22. Horkin calling for this one. Horkin off that right boot. Finds touch this time. Good work by Brown to move it out of there and just slow things down a little bit after a sustained Cornell attack. Line out here for Cornell, just inside the halfway. Edward Bogdan to put this one in. Albany, New York born high school wrestler. Player up and down there for Cornell. Slowing this down just a bit. Try to go this time, but Brown takes that one away. Referee's gonna come back. Not sure what the call is gonna be here. He may be not straight, possibly. Not too sure about that one, but it was important for Cornell to win that. Unfortunately, they just lost it. They just had a series of plays and within Brown's half, deep in their 22, and wanted to keep the pressure there. It'll be Brown with a scrum right at midfield. Good room to run. Dangerous set of backs out there. They've slid Grant over, so there's an open left-hand side. Should court to Baria. Decide he wants to venture off on his own that way. Good squeeze by Brown on referee, not penalizing. Lewis is going to move that ball out into the middle of the field. A little bit looping there as they put it into Dyer. Dyer looking for a runner and finds him. Finds Horkin, a little knock on there. Intentional if I was going to have to say it, but Tay is going to come up with it. Ball in the hands of Amar Dillon. Amar Dillon always able to step one or two. Lewis looking for some runners, gets the Horkin, Horkin to Cortabaria. Cortabaria always has that right hand out for a fend. Lewis, Dyer, Dyer spots some space back there. Ball is rolling back towards the try line of Cornell, but is not gonna make it. Hoofed away by Dominic Boresta. Boresta from Ridgewood, New Jersey. Ball into Tay's hands. Tay shows those seven skills. Has beaten 16 players in a 15-man game, as they say, with those steps around there. And now they have runners out wide if they want, but the ball is going to come back in. Brown playing a little tighter than normal today. Players coming in, but we're going to come back. I'm sure that was an offsides <laughs> against uh, Cornell.
A referee just having a chat here, not sure what about. As we're at the 30 minute mark here, 10 minutes to go. Referee McConnell wants to have a word with the captains. Referee telling the teams to have a little bit of a word here. And I believe it will be a penalty here eventually for Brown. Dyer has a ball in hand. <laughs> Dyer pushes that one on the side of the field. Be opportunity from a line out right at the 40 meter line for the Bears. Time winding down in this first half, just 17 points in it. Set piece has been so dangerous for the Brown Bears. They've got a really strong back line with the 9s and 10s pulling strings, 12 and 13 making powerful runs, running good lines, and the good wing is to be able to finish it all off with their good footwork. Cortabari is going to go up for this one. Ball into his hands. Brown is going to play on there. Lewis to Horkin. Horkin comes back in the back to the try scorer, Grant. He has got a lead blocker. <laughs> Referee has spotted. A little unfortunate there, but uh, American football is across the street from the stadium as Cornell goes quickly into Connor Thomas's hands. Connor Thomas, senior from Westchester, New York. Cornell on the roll again late in this first half. Ball up into the hands. And penalty now against Cornell again. As off go Brown, they've got the room to run here. They've got some runners. And held in there, Lewis has to shovel that one off to Goldberg. Goldberg steps inside, doesn't need Dylan. They've got some runners, Lewis. Scrum half may have to take this one in himself, does. Ball will be recycled well. They've got just a little pick and go to let everything reset here. And Cornell hitting hard, looking for those counter ruck opportunities. Get them occasionally, but that one's going to come down to Cortabaria. Cortabaria stopped up. Referee has spotted something here. That's going to be a penalty against Brown this time. Bit of a messy ruck there. It's not sure exactly what happened. Yeah, it was good from Cornell there, realizing that there was only one player in the ruck in a bad body position and capitalized on that with a counter ruck. And with that pressure, they got a penalty from it. Cornell line out here at their own 40 meter line. Just waiting for a ball here. Bogdan to put this one in again. Albany Academy grad. Looking to the middle line out and they convert this one. However, another penalty against Cornell here and here Kent Brown here, and Cornell is going to go quick through that big man, Connor Thomas, high school wrestler, engineering major at Cornell. A little pick and go off the back there. Now out to the back, a static line of runners there for Cornell. Big rush from Brown, keeping them just stuck in their place. Turned over, great work there by Forgione. Ball up to Cortabaria. Cortabaria has some players rushing him. Ball goes to the ground. 
Cornell applying pressure again there. Horkin this time spots some room in the back. He's behind his 50, but doesn't go for the line. Ball's gonna roll over the head and into the try zone for Dominic Barresta. Be a goal line dropout here for Cornell. Brown's gonna need to be alert. Referee just sorting things out here for this goal line dropout. New rule this year. Everybody uh, still trying to figure out every now and again what it's all about. But if the ball rolls into the team's try zone, they get a uh, goal line dropout. So we are going to indeed have one with just about three or four minutes to go in the game clock in this first half. Brown players spread. Let's see what they decide to do from this one. The ball comes a little tight down in the hands of Forgione. Now up into the hands of big Joe Alhasso. Cortabaria has Dylan. Dylan has the line, but able to keep the ball back into Cortabaria. And in touch they go, but a good little bit of interplay after really not seeing too much of Brown these last few minutes, Matt. Yeah, Just, uh, you know, good to see him get back on offense. Yeah, seriously good offload there. So some sort of momentum swings that you want to be able to get back into it and sort of put the pressure back on again and keep going at it, so. It's good to see, start off with Jack Forge with the Jackal about on the halfway line. Under pressure is Cornell at their own line. Tipped away there by Brown. Yeah, to the hands. Steel. To the hands of Goldberg. Goldberg sets that one. Cornell attempting to uh, Jackal that, but doesn't work. Players off his feet. Penalty here for Brown. Let's see what they decide to do. I'm sure they, and especially Coach Laflamme, would like five more points before this half is over. As Brown calls for a scrum, been a strong point of their game so far, Matt. Yeah, definitely a really strong point. It sets it off with, a, like you said, the eight in the back line to be unleashed. So. And they move their wing. Cortabaria has a lot of room on this right-hand side. Cornell wing is just going to have to sit back on this. One of the Cornell props, as they like to do, having a nice conversation with the referee. Ball to go in for Brown, the right-hand side, just beckoning there for the young Cortabaria. But good work by Cornell to skew it around the other way. Horkin puts it in the middle, gets in Aaron Kranz. Aaron Kranz takes it into contact. They're going to keep going in this same direction. They do. Horkin has space open in front of him, lobs one over the top to Tay. Tay bobbles it. And a try awarded to Tay. He was able to scoop that one back up, and the fullback gets his second of the day. Yeah, it all started there from Jake Aaron Kranz making a strong carry in, drawing in the defenders, which meant there was space open wide on the wings, which James Hawkins saw and capitalized on with a nice offload to do this day. So far this game, two tries to Tay, two tries to Grant. That's all it's in for Brown right now as they look to convert this one. Tay looking to convert his own kick. Time is winding down here in this first half at Marvel Field. Just 30 seconds or so on the game clock. Referee may have a little extra time. That time not going to make it, just across the front there. Another kickoff to come. Still some time to go in this first half, according to referee McConnell. And Cornell will kick this one off. Two minutes to go, according to the referee, and extra time in this first half. Where it is 22-0, Brown over Cornell. Cornell. 
Cornell would certainly like to take some points away from this half, and Brown obviously the same as the ball comes down to Cortabaria. Into a pot of four as they go, a little show. Good defense there from Cornell to force them back inside. A little pick there from Brown. Not too typical from them, but they have runners across the field that they can use them, forced to step back in. And a penalty for a high tackle against Cornell. No uh, advantage coming there. Referee's gonna go back. Tay hands the ball off to Dyer. Dyer is gonna put this one downfield. Better attacking position for Brown. Try to put another five points on the forward before halftime. Brown on the attack here, gets it to the middle. Off they go. Muser brought that one down. They've got some runners out here, and that's that man, Forgione. He has been electric in this first half, showing up everywhere. Ball to Dyer in the first receiver spot. Ball moves out wide to Tay. Tay gets it knocked down. I would call that del deliberate, but referee sees it differently. Brown still on the attack, however. They've got runners out wide. Here comes Cortabaria, always looking for that outside shoulder and finds it. Legs pumping, goes through again to Horkin this time. Ball out to the double try score. Grant taken down just outside the 40 meter line. And this may have been turned over by Cornell here. It's a bit of a mess. As our referee comes back, looks at his watch, and it penalizes Brown. We're gonna keep going here until the ball gets to the end. That should be it. A little knock on on the penalty there, but the referee is not going to call it. He's going to bring him back, allow him to play it through. Scoreboard. Cornell goes to a standing player in the back. Brown trying to peel this one away. Ball's going to come back to Cornell, see what they can make happen here as a big individual runner comes across the 22. That's their number eight, Tyler Webb. Weeks of two minds there. Winds up getting drawn in by a couple of the Brown defenders. Interesting decision there from Cornell, just spinning off the back. Not much happening here as the ball gets turned over. Brown, one more chance to attack here. Ball gets knocked down. We're going to keep playing here at Marvel Field. That time the referee spots something. And now it's halftime as the Brown Bears lead a 22 to nil over Cornell. That's the first half here at Marvel Field. We'll be back with second half action in just a few minutes. Referee Mike McConnell will get us going. John Broker here with Matt Mitchell for this exciting second half action. And we are just about underway. Nice and high from the Bears. Cornell has yet to receive one. That one finds some ground. Eventually picked up by one of the big red players. Ball bobbled, Brown on the attack. The hands of Lewis, Lewis moves it out quick. Into the hands of Horkin, there's a big set of room there for Aaron Kranz, but he decides to go wide to Dillon. Dillon takes a bounce pass. Dillon works his way back in field. They have got some serious numbers off to the left-hand side. If they can make it out, get it out here. Cortabaria, he is one to run, not always one to pass. Pops the ball up there to Big Muser. Paul Muser touches down. First try of the second half, real quick for the Brown Bears. Matt Mitchell, I was going to say Cornell has a lot of work to do, but now they have even more. Yeah, it's good for Brown to be able to come out of the second, 
out of the first half until we put a lot of um, stress on the Cornell defence. Yeah, it looks like it's a real good contest too from the back row and the forward from both the Brown and the Cornell team. The Cornell back row of Connor, Patrick and Tyler being big strong ball carriers and the Brown back row including Chase, Santiago and Jack being ball carriers himself and I guess Jack uh, sorry, I guess Jack and Santiago got one Jack and one Poach each in the first half so it's a good contest overall. <coughs> Tay looks to convert. Looks a, a better leg on that one, and it makes it. We are good. We're at 29 to nil. Cornell over, a uh, Cornell <laughs> behind by 29. Excuse me. Brown continues to take it on here. Cornell, a lot of work to do. Referee McConnell at midfield with Cornell. Cornell trying to go short here, have done. Ball bounces off of a Cornell player, but did not make it 10. We'll see what Brown decides to do. Brown back out to the midfield. Slow to move here, but we're going to have a scrum at the midfield for Brown. Let's see what they decide to do. They got runners coming off to the left hand side here. Again, leaving a big swath of land open for Cortabaria if he wants to go in that direction. A little switch up here, so a little less room there as they split the back line. Good scrum there from Brown, but a big pushback coming from Cornell. Really working on that moment when they slow down a little bit. Cortabari gets to Lewis. Lewis puts it to the boot. And well Tay. taken there by Baresta. Baresta moving across the field, however. Brown just running out of room. Ball up into the hands of one of the big units there. That's Brett Geis. Geis takes that one in. Into the hands of Goldberg. Goldberg. Looking for it, ball a little flat to Dyer, but they're gonna chip this one over, looking for the kick pass. Can it Dylan come up with it? Has not, ball rolls into touch. A good thinking there from Brown, but just didn't quite go to hand. Yeah, real good thinking, seeing there's a lot of space back there, and I guess it's nice being, there's a 29 or so point top, so having that sort of, being comfortable to be able to try things like that, which obviously could result in a try or could result in what's happened. But at the end of the day, the, uh, Cornell are under a lot of pressure and have a line out deep in their 22, so they're going to have to execute that and make sure they exit. Ball up into the middle there for Cornell. They come down with a bit, but a lot of pressure coming from Cortabaria. And uh, Cornell can uh, just push it basically back out to the same place almost, but now it's going to be an attacking line out for Brown. Good pressure from Cortabaria. Cuts off that distance. Ball up to Muser, ball down into a mall for B the Bears. The Bears knocking on the door here. Lewis gets a hold of it, gets to Horkin. Horkin puts it out to Forgione. Forgione looking for a wraparound runner, doesn't find him. Cornell trying to put pressure on this one. May turn this over, but Lewis gets a hold of it. Looks one way, goes the other, gets the ball up into the hands of Cortabaria. He goes for that outside shoulder again. Just tossing, turning around. He's like his pinball machine at the moment. 
Again, into the middle of the field. <laughs> Running in a whole bunch of different directions are Brown, but we're going to come back to, it looks like, a forward pass against Brown. Be a Cornell scrum at their own five-meter line. A little slow to settle in here as Cornell look to move it out of their 22 here in the second half. Yeah, and a slight little breeze pick up here into the backs of Brown and into the faces of Cornell. Big drive there from Brown. Cornell have to take it off the back, but they are under heaps of pressure at the moment. Brown may have turned this over in the contact there. We will see Cornell pile on the bodies in there. Bit of 1980s rugby breaks out for a second. We're going to come back for a penalty against Cornell. Brown, another opportunity here. Brown puts it to the corner. It's going to be a line out here for the Bears. Just five meters out from the Cornell line. I think yeah. we're going to see a, a bit of a mall here. Yeah, given how the mall's going, it'll be good to see a mall going. We'll get a few yards, but it'll be nice to see the scrum off Dan Lewis keep the ball into the mall. They're supposed to be using it as soon as it stops. There's always a sort of second birth of the mall where you get the second push and the second win. So hopefully they can be patient, keep it in, and then eventually get over the line. Goldberg puts it in. We're getting a line. Maul, as we said, was probably going to happen. Driving that one forward. Cornell doing a good job trying to push it towards the line. As the ball comes down in and around the back there. There's Dylan. Dylan has some runners out wide. Dylan gets a bit of a sloppy pass away there and knocked on. So we know the scrum for Cornell here. And it's just a little back and forth mistakes from these teams. Yeah, after a strong defensive uh, counter and the mall from the corner, it'll be interesting to see how the Brown forwards react and respond to that here. And as you said, Matt, there's a big push coming on from Brown. Cornell, a little breakaway there from their number nine. Weeks able to find some purchase of land there, but it's been knocked on and turned over by the Bears. The Bears come back with a penalty. Will Lewis go quick? Another good tackle there from Santi, the number eight. Dyer pushes that one down. Be another line out here for Brown. Referee Laflamme giving some advice in there, but. Things slowed down while they retrieve a ball for this. Yeah, 10 meters out will be interesting what Paul Musa wants to call here, whether he wants to go for that mall again. They Seems decided like to go into the middle of the field. Horkin finds a runner, just a little flat foot in the midfield. It probably would have 
We've gotten a little bit more work there as Chase Beckeris takes that one in. They're going to come back to Horkin. Horkin's going to go to Tay on the wing. Tay is going to try to step. Tay gets to the five meter line, has support with him. Lewis, some pressure on again at this breakdown, but these Cornell players are laying on the ground. I'm surprised there wasn't a penalty for collapsing over that, but ball's been turned over by Cornell. Opportunity to move their lines here, and Duncan Grant keeps that one in. Grant moves it across to Tay. Tay is gonna come back to this side of the field. There's a little open lane for him. Not gonna get there. Horkin. Gets that one to Brett Geis. Geis into contact. Again, the pressure coming from Cornell at the breakdown where they're very strong. Aaron Kranz moves that one wide into Dillon. Dillon heads for the corner. Dillon inside the 22. Dillon had one to beat but gave it up kindly. And it looks like Santiago Cortabari is going to touch down here for another five points for the Brown Bears. The fourth person to score today, two by Grant, two by Tay, one by Muser, and now Cortabaria joins the party. Like Lewis to try to convert this one. Lewis, just a quick step into it. Hits that one and we're at 31 to nil. Sorry, 36 to nil. Yeah, he's a very strong kicker there, Dylan. Tell you a quick story about when he played for the Free Jacks under 19 against the uh, the DC team under 19, and um, he slotted three kicks from behind his own halfway line to win the really? game. Really? So, yeah. Didn't know he had that power on him. It's yeah. mostly been uh, Tay kicking this season. Good to know. Cornell just waiting for a ball here. Cornell to get us going here again at Marble Field in the second half. These little chips are uh, good work there by Cornell. Finally getting one down. Tyler Webb working his way across the field. And Tyler Webb, powerful run. Takes away a bit of his attack there. They're going to stay tight with a pick and go. Webb played at Rye High School, the powerful number eight from uh, just outside of New York City in the town of Rye. Another pick and go, nearly a high tackle against Brown, but player lowered his arm there as off we go, trying to keep it tight, but possibly turned over here. Ball all over the ground and penalty against Cornell for players just coming in from the wrong side there. And Brown just staves off yet another Cornell attack with a penalty to push down field, I'm sure, from Dyer. Dyer launches one, and just finds touch at the halfway. Attacking line out here for Brown. Fifteen minutes gone in the second half here. Goldberg gets it quickly to Muser. Muser to Horkin. Horkin has a runner coming around the back, and Grant. Grant moves in the middle of the field, just slightly behind Aaron Kranz, but Dyer gets a hold of it. Ball knocked on there, turned over by Cornell. 
Nothing happening, though. We're going to go back for a scrum here for Cornell, just inside their own half. Referee McConnell going to bring this one up. Something not going right there in the front row. Another scrum here for the Big Red. Referee McConnell. McConnell certainly taking his time. Make sure everything gets set down properly here. <laughs> Big squeeze there from Brown. Cornell. Ball squirts out the back. They're going to hang on to it as they move it out a little show and go. From their 10 there, Calarco, but he can't find too much room. He's just inside his own half. Set of forwards most likely about to take this one, but a little spill forward there. Ball is in Brown's hand. Lewis knocks it on himself, so we're going to have two of them. Going to come back here for a scrum here for Brown just at the halfway. Been right at the halfway, just trading punches here for the last few minutes, Matt. Yeah, I mean, we, we haven't really gone anywhere really for the past five minutes, so hopefully we can get the scrum underway and quickly see a bit of exciting rugby, rugby here. Yeah. yeah, especially when you're so many points off, I guess it's easy for Brown to want to sort of score that point on the first phase and sort of chase the points, but it's important to also play fluent rugby and like have some consistency within your game so you can develop on it and set things up. And don't sort of chase it, but sort of be a bit more patient with the game. And eventually points will come. Especially with how sort of the brown forward pack is sort of playing at the moment where they're getting front football for the backs. Good push there. Cortabaria has the ball at his feet. Pops it up to Lewis. Lewis gets to Horkin. Horkin has some runners. Straight up to Aaron Kranz. Big ball up there to Beeling. Beeling first touch of the second half. Works that ball back. Brown piling on, or Cornell piling on over it. Penalty against, however, as players just coming off their feet there from Cornell. Brown opportunity to push this one downfield again. Dyer pushes that one down. It's going to be a line out here for Brown. Four substitutes coming to the game for the Bears, or three substitutes coming to the game. Al Jandari. Yeah, Omar and Jandari there at 17. Jack Elliott there at 19. And, and Kago Hachisuka there Hachisuka as well at coming 17. in. A couple of the same numbers on the jerseys here. We'll do the best we can. Line out here for the Bears, just at the, just right at the 22, actually. Good attacking spot here. Horkin waiting for this one. They go up to Muser. Down that time, the defense from Cornell was up a little bit early there. We're going to come back. A referee reaches in the pocket. We're going to get a card here for one of the Cornell players. Just a shot to the head there, frankly.
Yellow card there for the number eight from Cornell. Big loss. Just a stupid penalty right in front of the ref there. A little frustration coming out. Yeah, it's easy to get frustrated when things like aren't going your way throughout the whole day. But it's important for sort of the leaders of the Cornell Big Red team to sort of come out and make the sort of big carries and sort of show that once they regroup, it is possible to put pressure back onto Brown. Ball down to the corner for Brown. Good attacking position here for them. Second half here at Marvel Field, this Ivy League matchup, 36 to nil. Ball up to Muser. Up. Gonna maul this one, are the Bears. Driving towards the line. Cornell does a good job of pushing up all the way. That goes wide to Forgione. He's a hard working man. Gets that one to the ground. Referee says ball's gone back. We're gonna keep playing. Horkin has runners out wide. Aaron cramps to Dyer. Dyer's got runners. Dyer out there. Into the hands of two try scorer. Now a three try scorer, Duncan Grant. Nice little setup there from Keijo Hachisuka to put Grant away for his hat trick. Yeah, good hat trick and meat pies here for Duncan Grant. As we reach 41 here. Lewis will attempt to convert this one. Yeah, good from Kago there for his first touch of the game too, to be able to hold on to the ball, draw in the defender and execute the two on one. Jasuka, the sophomore from Conroe, Texas, but played some rugby at the Shawnigan Lake School up in British Columbia. Big rugby hotbed up there. As Lewis looks to convert this one. Lewis with that good boot, as you said, Matt, but that one goes across the face of it. We're going to stay at 41 to nil here. Cornell certainly wants to get some points on the board. Just about 23 minutes gone, a little over the halfway mark in the second half here. 18, 19 minutes to go. Cornell needs some points here. A little longer this time for Brown. Cortabaria has to take that one. Works his way to the ground. Well, up into the hands of a waiting pot of forwards there. A lot of room out behind. Brown decides to go that way, and they will. That's Dyer spotting it. Rolls it over the 40 and in a touch. Going to be a Cornell line out at their own 40 meter line. Good good way to spot that space back there. Yeah, very good exit there. It's important, especially off a kickoff, to sort of set it up and then get the exit. And that's what they did. Cornell down 41 points. Thinks about going quick. We're going to bring that one back. Bogdan. Tipped Good away there up. by the Bears. Good work again by Muser. Ball into the hands of Alhasso. There's Cortabaria again. High tackle. Referee has spotted it, but Cortabaria able to wriggle free from those things. Got a piece of rubber when people come onto him. Horkin puts one into Forgione. Forgione finding some space. Turned over there, however, by Cornell. Referee is not going to go back for the high tackle penalty. He's going to let him play on. The pick and go game on here again for Cornell. Ball up two weeks. 
Weeks puts it out. Cornell keeping the ball relatively tight here. Be able to roll through the phases, see if they can break down this Brown defense. All but three of the Cornell players within about a two meter <laughs> range of the ball over there. Obviously want to play the tight game here. And eventually the ball comes out. Looking for that kick into Grant's hands. Grant's maybe not the guy you want to kick to after scoring three tries so far today. Gets the ball out there to Hachisuka. Hachisuka moves the ball across. Dyer thought about the kick. Gets the ball up to Alhaso. Lewis gets the ball to Horkin. Horkin moves the ball out to Cortabaria. Cortabaria's got a head of steam. Gets in between a couple and offloads the ball. Another try to come here. And in they go. Brown touching down in the middle of the field, and that is Paul Muser. He's on, got his second on the board today. Yeah, seriously good run there from the Moose to be able to cut in and finish it off. And we're at 46, a little straightforward kick here for Lewis on this one. Lewis converts that one, puts another two on the board. We are 48 to nil. About 15 minutes to go in the second half. Cornell to kick off one more time. High up into the sun, knocked forward by one of their players and in the hands of Al Hasso. Referee may or may not have spotted that, but Brown is going to have the ball anyway and get to keep playing here. Lewis looking for some runners. Lewis moves it in. Feeling it blasts that one in. Lewis spots some runners. Dyer gets the ball up there. Big Al Jandari wanted it, but Cortabaria had it. Cortabaria is going to show the outside, going to go back in. He's getting a lot of steps in today, Cortabaria. And the Belen Jesuit grad scores another try. Second one for him. And we are over the 50 point mark. 53 to 0 on a Cortabaria huge run. Yeah, seriously impressive from the freshman number eight to be able to recognize that there was space there and to not force the pass and to run it through himself. You can set the wheels. Lewis looking to push this one to 55. Gets it there. 55 points on the Lewis kick. Just about 10 minutes to go in this competition, this Ivy League game. 55 nil. Brown leads Cornell. Some changes coming in here for Cornell, rolling some players in. Waiting for a ball to midfield, and they have one. So the sun is back out here. We have a hot late October day. Cornell goes along this time into Al, oops, not into Al Hasso's hands. Taken there by 
uh, Jack Elliott, but hoof downfield and Cornell spots some space they thought in the back. Lewis gonna return it off of a Brown player, but Cornell still on the run here. Cornell a rare opportunity inside the Brown zone. Again, the pick and go game. Doesn't seem to work out. Knocked on in one of those pick and go exchanges there. It's gonna be a Brown scrum right at their own 22. Good power there from Brown as they drive that one forward. Referee has his arm out for the penalty. Free play if they want it. They may go wide with this one. They have done. Dyer goes behind. One wing to the other. Dillon gets it out there. We're going to come back for the penalty as Duncan Grant had a long way to go for his fourth try there. Yeah, the pack will be happy with that scrum, especially 60, 70 minutes in, and the legs are starting to get tired. It's important to be able to still put the pressure on and still push and eventually get the free kick, it seems like. And Brown goes for the old Irish Gary Owen. Ball up into the sun, but bounces down. Into the hands of the big number 17 for Cornell. He's got ahead of steam. Gets her a couple. Does Richard Burlinghoff. Burlinghoff from Huntington, New York. Cold Spring Harbor High School. This one pops up to the formerly red carded Tyler Webb. Good pressure from Brown there. Cornell just losing ground at the moment inside their own half. See what they decide to do with it. Running out of options. Turned over there by Dyer. Dyer. Has to hang on to that one, gets to the 40 meter line. Cleared away by Cornell. We're gonna come back for a penalty against Cornell for, it looks like hands in there. And they'll slow down and go to Dyer to push this one. Into the corner they go. Excellent kick there from JT, really pushing into almost five meters out. Six minutes, according to the referee, to go in this Ivy League competition. 55 to nothing here at Marvel Field. Brown, a couple of big games coming up in the Ivy League. Next week they have Penn, which uh, they're, you know, you know, on paper, better team, but it's a game by game. But the big one is November 6th against uh, uh, Dartmouth, up at Dartmouth. That may be for the Ivy League championship. Yeah, it's definitely a big game, especially with the, the Ivy League championship all in to play for and similar scores with the recent games against Harvard as well. So it should be a really exciting game that we're all looking forward to. Brown on the roll here. Ball out to Dyer, good hands, but dropped by Cortabaria. Referee says it went straight down. Cortabaria headed towards the line, not to be outdone by some teammates. Cortabaria touches down three, and that's two hat tricks in this game for two different players on the Brown Bears. See if one of them can put one more in as we hit 60. Yeah, seriously good finish there from the number eight flanker. Always has like a winger's finish, but uh, flanker strength. Muser has two, Cortabaria has three, Grant has three. Lots of scoring here from the Brown Bears as Lewis Look to convert this. A 
Lewis puts that one high and good. We're at 62. With time winding down here. Cornell pushes that one a little bit long. Hands it. Elliot. Elliot absorbs some contact there from Cornell. Got flipped, but able to get the ball back. Lewis digs it out. Dyer launches that one downfield. Knocks it out into touch. Bounces in first. So it's going to be a line out for Cornell just inside their own half, right in front of our booth. Cornell looks to go to the middle, have won that one. Ball in behind there, wasn't exactly what they wanted. Let's fly half has to keep it and knocks it on. The ball moves out to Aaron Kranz, Aaron Kranz to Dyer. Dyer's got a runner outside of him. They go to the wing, some contact there. Cornell takes him to the ground. The Bears with an opportunity to put in another five points before the end of this one. The ball comes wide there to Forgione. All the hard work he's done today, a little bit unseen. Would have deserved a nice try there, but big counter ruck coming in from Cornell. Good rip there. Well, that is one bright spot for this Cornell team. They really do counter ruck pretty well. There's a, what a big bar. runner comes through for Cornell, finding some room there. He is off and on his own. He has Cortabaria coming up to find him. Gets it up to his number eight. Nice line there from Cornell late in this game. Would certainly like to take something home. Five points would be nice for him. That's a big Andre Irmalev. It's in, and Brown penalized. They're going to go quick. Here he is again, the big unit. Connor Thomas making the runs for Cornell. Pick and go. Cornell held up. Brown has to release. They're going to get that one. They've got some runners out wide. Can they get what you would have to call a consolation try? Balls up into the hands there. A big at number 12, Benjamin Villani. Back to Connor Thomas. Other oh, pick and go there around the back. And it working their way slowly and methodically towards the line are the Cornell forwards. Let's see if they decide to spread it wide at all. They stay tight. Well driven back by the Brown defense. A wrestling match here late in the game. Winding down the clock here are Cornell, but looking for those five points. Let's see if a mistake creeps in here from either side. And a ball eventually down there. And five points for Cornell late in the game here. Couldn't see who the score was, but an extended period of pick and goes results in a good five points. Cornell looking to get another two points on the board here. Has a bit of distance. 
Pushed off to the side, however. Referee is going to whistle that for the end of our game. A late try there for Cornell. Gets him something on the board. 62-5 to here at Marvel Field. Brown overcomes him again, un, uh, undefeated in the Ivy League. For Matt Mitchell, I'm John Broker, and our great camera crew, we thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.